have seen earlier uh, what is the concept of signal. Uh, that is, signal is one which carries an information or a message. And an example we have seen uh, the uh, uh, signal in a traffic, uh, uh, traffic situations. So whenever there are few roads are meeting at a junction, we have got signal. Why we call it signal even though they are only colors, green or red or uh, um, uh, amber, they are only colors. Since they tell us to go ahead when it is green or they tell us that we have to stop the vehicle when it is red or we have to start when it is amber, that is this color tell us some information or some certain, certain message. Hence we call that as green signal. Why we added signal to the word to the color green? Since green tells us a message, uh, an information, so we called it as a signal. So similarly, we have seen another example as a um, uh, voltmeter, where the current is uh, going through the coil when we supply a voltage to the voltmeter. So since the voltage uh, is uh, carried, the message of voltage is carried by the current flowing through the coil, the current is called the current signal. We add, add signal there again because the ma magnitude of the voltage is carried by the magnitude of the current. So we say current signal. Then the current signal when it uh, is flowing through the coil which is positioned between north pole and south pole, a torque is produced. Now the torque we add again signal because the torque carries the information of voltage because current is proportional to voltage and torque is proportional to current. So each one is carrying the first information of voltage so we added the word torque signal. And later on when the torque is taken up by the spring which is uh, connected to the coil mounting, uh, the torque is transduced again into a rotate, rotate, ro ro rotary angle, rotatory angle theta. So theta carries the again information of the torque, torque again carries information of voltage, so theta carries information of voltage. So call this as rotatory angle, angle uh, um, angular signal, theta is the angular signal. Then the theta is given to the pointer, pointer moves over the scale uh, through a distance. This distance again tells something about the voltage, hence we call that displacement signal. So from voltage signal, the voltmeter has processed the signal uh, for a displacement, for a displacement signal. Signals are processed within the voltmeter, uh, thereby the voltage signal is, uh, trans is changed into a displacement signal. So what we write on the, uh, on the scale of the voltmeter, even though pointer moves over the scale in terms of distance, but we write there as uh, the uh, volt, volt. This is the point I want to stress now while drawing the signal flow diagram that uh, the output signal, yeah, output signal should be written should be, should be written in terms of in terms of the physical parameter. physical parameter. This is one point while we draw the signal flow diagram this is to be noted down. That means um, uh, for the voltmeter for if we draw the signal flow diagram for the voltmeter, see voltage then current I, current signal, current signal gives rise to torque signal, torque signal from there we have got theta, from theta we have got uh, D, say D is the displacement. So even though the last, last piece we are written, this is the scale, so we are written here, so 0 voltage and 10, say 10 volts, but actually the pointer move, the pointer is, is traversing distance, so we, are, we do not write voltage here, voltage is only here in the input side, but the output we should see the physical parameter, physical parameter is only displacement. So we write here as distance D and, we write, and again we designate it as uh, output signal, V as the input signal. So this is the one point you have to note, even though the scale is written in terms of volt, voltage, but actual parameter is displacement, so we have to write the output signal as displacement. This is very important for designing the uh, instrument or uh, in understanding the functioning of the instrument, this is to be noted down. And the signal flow diagram also, it is analogous to a um, power flow diagram, power, uh, power flow diagram in a power plant. Uh, in a big power plant what we do, say it is, if it is we are using a coal, for, for power is we are using uh, two lines for arrow. So coal, yeah, this is the coal. From there uh, we have got uh, the chemical energy, coal is converted into chemical energy, it is the process in the furnace. 
So uh, um, coal is in the form of chemical energy. Yeah, chemical, chemical energy in coal is converted into in the furnace uh, heat energy. Heat energy. This is the energy processing. The energy processing. So from heat energy we get uh, say um, uh, uh, steam energy. Steam energy. Then by using the steam energy, this is steam energy what you have got and uh, we have got the mechanical energy, this is mechanical energy. By using turbine here, we are converting the steam energy into mechanical energy and by using alternator, we have got electrical energy, this is electrical energy. That is how the energy is processed within a power plant, yeah, this is turbine. So, um, uh, this is alternate, sorry, this is alternator or generator, generator, this is your turbine, heat energy, steam energy is a boiler. So, here you have got furnace. So, at different places, the energy is processed. So, similarly in an instrument, signal is processed at different places. So, if the voltage is converted into current by the coil and the current is converted into torque by the coil and magnet and the torque is converted into uh, angular rotation by the spring and uh, the theta is converted into displacement by the pointer mechanism. That is how the signal is flowing within the instrument. So what you have drawn for the voltmeter is, is the, the, that is the detailed uh, signal flow diagram. That is what we have drawn is in terms of basic functional element. We learnt earlier what is basic functional element. This is a basic functional element. This is the most detailed diagram for the signal flow diagram for the voltmeter. We can also, I mean, there are different ways of drawing signal flow diagram. The roughest way of drawing signal flow diagram is for a voltmeter, you simply write, designate or indicate the voltmeter by one block itself. You give voltage and you give, you get output. So this is your output signal, this is your input signal. This also we call it a signal flow diagram or block diagram, but this is the roughest. The whole instrument is represented by one block. Whereas uh, when it is divided, when we see the detail how the signal is uh, processed in most, I mean, uh, I mean, the in the most detailed form, we get so many, so four blocks are there. One more point, we, what we have noticed, see here, uh, each uh, for, for achieving each function, signal is from voltage to current, we use coil. One physical element achieves one function, transducing function, or one basic function. But there are instances, we have seen also an example in terms of the electronic processor gauge, where one physical element can process more than one basic functional, uh, one, more than one basic functions. For example, you consider the diaphragm in that electronic processor gauge. This is the diaphragm, fixed diaphragm. The pressure is acting here. So, uh, the now we are, I will again draw the signal flow diagram. So pre, this is the pressure and uh, here what you have got is force. That is the area of the diaphragm converts the uh, pressure into the force. So the physical element here is diaphragm. This is diaphragm. So diaphragm area achieves the function of transducing pressure to force. Now, there is also, I told, there are, it is also functions as a comparator and another force comes here Fb, I call it is Fi and Fe, the difference between the two forces. Now the, this force Fb comes from the extension of the coil mounting. So we have got coil here and which is positioned between the poles of a magnet, this what we have seen earlier. Yeah. This north pole, this may be south pole, here also we have the north pole. Now whenever a current flows in a coil, a force is developed, this force acts in this opposite, the coil winding is in a such a direction. When current flows in the coil, the force acts here, this is our Fb and this force due to pressure, it is moving in this direction. So this is our Fi, Fi is equal to P into A. So to compare these two forces, the comparator, 
happens to be here diaphragm itself. This is comparator. Comparator. This is again diaphragm. Diaphragm has already achieved one function of transducing the pressure to force. And second function it does is the two forces are compared with the diaphragm. And suppose Fi is larger, then Fi minus Fb will be in the same direction of Fi. So it deforms. That is again it does another function that if he is there in the diaphragm and that itself converts into displacement D1. This is again diaphragm. To convert that Fe resultant force, say when Fi is larger than Fb, so then Fe Fe is acting in this direction and it deforms to the distance of this is our D1. So this function converting the or transducing the force into displacement is again achieved by diaphragm. So we find here it does three functions, same one physical element achieving three basic functions. This is the way we have to draw the single flow diagram. Yeah, many instances it happens. There are many places where we find one physical element does three different uh, um, uh, basic functions in instrument, in an instrument. This is a typical example. So uh, this is the way what we, we are supposed to draw the signal flow diagram. And um, uh, one or two, uh, because of the importance of the signal flow diagram, I will give one or two examples where you will learn how to draw the signal flow diagram for an instrument. Yeah. For, first, we will take a pneumatic uh, type pressure transducer. Examples for drawing signal flow diagram. signal flow diagram, it's examples for drawing the signal flow diagram. So first is uh, pneumatic uh, type displacement, pneumatic type displacement to, trans, uh, to pressure transmission. So um, an unit, um, uh, pneumatic uh, type uh, unit, is, it looks like this, one typical unit. So a spring, uh, a displacement D1 is given, Xi is in terms of displacement D1 at the end of a spring. Spring is mounted over a lever and uh, you have got the spring pivot. This is the spring pivot, spring pivot and uh, so to say we have got a flapper nozzle system to transduce uh, this is the fixed nozzle. And uh, this is called variable nozzle, yeah, fixed nozzle. And this is the variable nozzle, nozzle. Then pneumatic uh, power amplifier. Pneumatic power amplifier. signal goes and uh, from this a yeah, bellow is connected for the feedback. So this, this is the output signal XO. So this is a pneumatic uh, displacement to pressure transducer. Suppose we are, uh, we are asked to draw the signal flow diagram for this. How to go about in drawing signal flow diagram? We have to draw signal flow diagram in terms of basic functional element. So we start with input signal always. So input signal is our displacement Xi is displacement D1. So when we give at this, this is spring, this is a spring. When you give a displacement to a spring, what happens? It is transduced into a force F. So by using a spring, displacement is transduced into a force. 
when there is a force at this pivoted lever, this is straight lever of course, then it is converted into a torque. So, this is your torque into, yeah, this is the leverage with the leverage, say let us call the leverage as K1 here, K1 up to this point. So, F into K n will give you a torque, torque T i, I will call T i. Now, there is the actually the uh, lever uh, forms as a comparator here and there will be T b also coming the backward uh, torque that we will see little later how it comes. The difference between two torques in this uh, lever will be T e. So, T e is the resultant torque which is taken up by the spring pivot. So, it, it uh, again the lever converts the T e into theta, yeah, yeah, net torque deflects the lever somewhat like this. So, this uh, theta times this uh, distance say k2, we will call k2, theta times k2 will be the displacement d2 here, this is our d2, say k2, we have got d2. Now, this displacement by, by this flapper nozzle system transduced into a pressure, this is actually our flapper nozzle system. flapper nozzle system converted into P, yeah, P pressure and this pressure is multiplied in the, this is pneumatic power amplifier, pneumatic power amplifier, PPA let us write, pneumatic power amplifier convert, then we have got PO as the output signal, it is a power amplifier, we indicate like this, this is our output signal, PO. Now, from PO it is fed back, fed, when PO is is acting over the bellow, this is our bellow, bellows area is multiplied with the P o, we have got the force, we have got the force F, I will call this uh, say here we have called F i, let us call F i and this I will call F 2 for example or so, something like this F 2 different from this F i and this F available and uh, through a distance of I will call it K 3 parameter time K3, leverage K3, we have got our torque. This force times this distance is equal to torque. So, that is our TB. It is a typical uh, closed loop type of instruments what you have learnt earlier. It is one of the closed loop type of instruments. But if you, what you have seen, the how signal is processed in minutest detail we have seen. Yeah? The displacement we have given that converted into force here, this force gets converted into torque and another torque they are compared here by the lever. Now, the lever is um, uh, used in many ways, simple lever, one simple lever is used uh, in processing signals at different stages. Yeah? So, this is, the, this is the way we are supposed to draw the signal for diagram. It gives the leverage for the designer to change the uh, uh, different uh, lengths of the lever at different times. Uh, that is how the signal for diagram, if we draw in terms of basic function element, it is very useful uh, for the designer as well as for a person who wants to understand how exactly this uh, transducer is functioning. Yeah. So, another example, uh, typical example is hydraulic uh, type of uh, displacement to pressure transducer. Now, as a second example, we see the uh, hydraulic type displacement pressure transducer because they are very commonly used uh, transducers in pneumatic and hydraulics. And uh, here we find hydraulic oil, this is hydraulic oil is there, is supplied from the uh, uh, compressor. Now, the displacement, this is displacement which has to be transduced into pressure P o, it, it goes through uh, the, now we give the displacement here to this uh, pointer to the or to the lever. So, it tilts the um, uh, this linkage and then distance is taken up by the, this is actually a flapper nozzle of uh, corresponding to uh, pneumatic systems. In the flapper nozzle is realized in terms of piston and cylinder assembly in hydraulics normally. So, the whatever the displacement we are given in terms of leverage, that is what I indicated by K1 in terms of some leverage. So, if you give 1 mm, so the 1 mm uh, tilts the lever like this, this 1 mm if it is a middle point, so 0.5 mm will go here. So, 0.5 mm is given to this piston and uh, it moves 
Correspondingly, we find the hydraulic pressure oils, so probably this is Pi at certain pressure Pi it is coming. So, some other pressure is developed at this uh, point that is our PO depending upon displacement this goes to atmosphere, this is atmospheric conditions. So, the leakage to atmosphere is controlled her, thereby pressure is very PO. So, that is how the P K2 is, uh, is the flapper nozzle system which is realized in terms of the, uh, the piston and cylinder assembly. So, DE, so DE which comes the DB we will see little later. So, but the difference between these two displays, one displays coming from here, another displays from uh, feedback loop which we see later and these two differences are, uh, are realized at this point and proportionally difference where pressure is developed. This is our straight loop, so DE and the PO. And the, and the backward loop what happens is pressure is transduced into force by this piston area. So, we call it uh, K3 as piston area, a yeah, force. Um, uh, force and this force when it acts over the um, uh, over the spring converted into displacement, some displacement actually it is to be uh, sorry this would be force, pressure is converted into force, this force is again by using this is spring K4 corresponding to spring constant. So, the force acting over a spring converted into a displacement D2, this is our D2 at this point we have got D2. So, so much distance when it uh, lever is here when it moves down we then it, it moves down like this tilt tilts like this. The difference between these two displacements are available here that is leverage here from this to this point leverage uh, for this whatever it is that is our K5 and uh, these two displacement are compared at this point and the resulting displacement DE is converted again to a PO. So, it is again a another closed loop uh, instrument or device converting the displacement into a pressure. So, now what you have drawn? We have drawn the signal flow diagram in most detail or in the basic functional element. So, these are the two examples which make uh, the uh, drawing of a signal flow diagram very clear. Then next concept uh, is a signal relation. So, this is our second concept, first one signal, then signal flow diagram and now signal relation third one is signal relation. Now, signal relation tells about the uh, relation between the input and output signal of a single block. There are two instances. We have, we have got, uh, see here we have got say five blocks are there. Each block, what is relation between D1 and DI? That is, uh, that is given by K1. Yeah, that is, uh, uh, the input signal multiplied by the output signal gives rise to the uh, gives rise to the output signal. The input signal times the gain. What whatever you write here in inside it is gain. So uh, as a typical example, we'll see another um, another instrument where uh, it measures pressure. Say piston and cylinder type of uh, pressure gauge. So it's a spring is here. Spring is there and uh, we have got a pointer mechanism, this pointer comes, this is your scale pressure gauge, so P0 to say 10 bar for example. It is a pressure measuring instrument P, PI, see input signal. So, for this whole instrument we can have one signal relation. So, this is our D2 for example, output signal is in terms of displacement you have seen uh, that the output should be given in terms of physical parameter. So, this is our Xi, Xi to Xo that is this is the instrument processing the pressure signal into the displacement signal. So, signal relation for the whole instrument as pressure gauge also we can write. So, P i to a, a D o that is signal relation whatever you are going to write inside or when we draw the signal flow diagram for this instrument is it comes like this uh, P i is our input signal and we have got uh, the force is the output signal of the first block. First block this is our um, piston area. So, A is the area of the, this is the area of the piston A. P A into A is the F. So, that is signal relation of the first block is F C equal to P into A. That is A is called the gain of the block. The gain is 1 which when multiplied with the input signal gives rise to output signal. So, that is what you have done P i into A is equal to F. That is how the signal relation is written. 
for individual block. Similarly, we write for all the blocks. Now, f by C s. C s is the spring constant. This is our C s spring constant of the of the spring spring constant. So, 1 by f into spring constant is in terms of Newton per millimeter. Say so f into 1 by C s Newton per millimeter will give rise to millimeter. That is our D 1. D1 is there as a displacement in the piston. So, this is our D1. The force acting over the spring gives us a deformation that is a distance moved by the piston as it is, that is D1. Now, the, this D1 is available in this uh, whole piston and uh, piston rod because one solid piece, and this D1 at this point is multiplied by this leverage. So, you call leverage of the pointer as A and B. So, B by A is the leverage. Now, we find uh, B by A is the leverage. So, it is multiplied to get the output signal D, D2, D2. This is our output signal. So, many, so much time. B by, so, B is twice then uh, uh, twice as uh, A. Then we find D1 is multiplied by 2, twice the distance we have got. For any small motion, 1 mm, for example, we get 2 mm here because of the leverage. Now, this A and 1 by Cs, B by A are the gain of the individual elements in single flow diagram. So, so to say signal relation of the second block is D1 is equal to F by C s and the signal relation for the third block D2 is equal to uh, D1 times B by A. That is the signal relation of each block specifies the relation between the output of that block to the input of that block. And when we want to write for the whole instrument, we have what we, have, we have is since it is a linear, most of the instruments linear uh, in character. So, we can multiply all the gains of the blocks that is A by C s into B by A. This is for the whole instrument, gain of the whole instrument is that is D, D O is equal to P i times A by C s and to B by A that is for the whole instrument. So, signal relation is written for individual block as well as for the whole instrument. This is an instrument, typical instrument in uh, open loop condition. That is, instrument is fun functioning in open loop condition. Suppose we have an instrument working in uh, closed loop condition. How to draw the signal uh, signal relation for the whole instrument? Yeah. So we will consider a typical example. Say it's a closed loop instrument. Yeah. Closed loop. As yes, a general uh, instrument, say we will call this parameter as gain as k1. So, this is our input signal and it goes to the comparator. So, we have, we have got another block say K2 and um, say K3, it goes this may be the output signal. From here we take um, a feedback loop. So, we have got again 2, 3 blocks say K4, K5. So, suppose this is an instrument how to draw the how to find out the signal relation of this instrument we have got simple thumb rule that is uh, xo by xi signal relation is also expressed in terms of ratio of xo by xi xo by xi is equal to signal relation of the straight loop so we call signal relation signal relation of straight loop we call it straight loop that is x i to x o straight line that is the straight loop divided by 1 plus open uh, signal relation signal relation of the open loop open closed loop opened op opened loop of the of closed loop. That is, we have to open this closed loop somewhere. Say we say I, I, I open it here, say A to A and B, I cut it here. Then draw the open loop of the closed loop from A to B, say so somewhat like this A. This is uh, from A I am going, then we are uh, through the closed loop only. Then I come to K2, then it comes to K4 and then K5 and then we have got point B. So, A to B is the A to B, A to B is the open loop of the closed loop. So, that is now uh, as per this equation what we have got now the signal relation is somewhat like this.
that is x o by x i as per this equation signal relation of the straight loop straight loop is uh, k 1 into k 2 into k 3 divided by 1 plus signal relation of the opened closed loop that is now you have got k 2 into k 4 into k 5. So, that is how we write the signal relation for the for a closed loop. So, that is regarding the signal relation writing the signal relation of the uh, instrument whether it is an open loop or closed loop, but uh, we always we, uh, we assume all these elements are linear elements they are hold out only for the linear elements. Next concept is sensitivity. Sensitivity is uh, one of the important properties of the instruments. It is analogous to uh, for a person also. We say a person is very sensitive when we when we say like that when he reacts uh, violently or uh, he reacts more than a normal man then we say a person is more sensitive for certain situations. Similarly, we say an instrument is more sensitive uh, when that instrument reacts more or for a given input signal it uh, gives more more output or more deformations then we say that person that instrument is more sensitive. So, the mathematical definition of sensitivity is if you call it S as sensitivity S equal to d x o by d x i where x i and x o are input and output signal respectively and d x o is the differential output signal and d x i is the difference input signal. That is for a differential input signal of d x i it gives a, uh, an output of uh, differential output of d x o. Suppose there is a relation that is x i x o is equal to function of x i this is our signal relation this signal relation x o is a function of x i signal relation in this situation sensitivity is equal to s equal to d x o by d x i and this happens to be an equation what you have seen earlier for each block or for whole instrument we can write x o is a function of or some constant times x i we can write. So, once we write like that for example, in the uh, piston type pressure gauge where piston cylinder and all are there we know the um, uh, displacement d 2 d 2 is equal to um, uh, a by c s into b by a into pressure. Now, what is d o d 2 this is output signal d x o is equal to a by c s into b by a p is our input signal x i. So, now you will find x o is a function of x i a constant times x i that is what is meant by signal relation. Once you got such a signal relation then sensitivity is equal to d x o by d x i then for this signal relation d x o by d x i is equal to a by c s into b by a this is our signal relation. So, sensitivity of for the signal relation this is our sensitivity s yes. that is sensitivity depends upon the uh, parameter of the instrument parameters are the area spring constant b by a the leverage of the pointer this decides the sensitivity of the instrument. Here it is a linear instruments because a linear instrument where the characteristic goes like this say x i to x o if you plot so it goes through the origin yeah, it goes through the origin. Uh, so, we call this as uh, so to say d x o by d x i is the slope of the signal relation the, the this curve is signal relation and the slope of this is equal to d x o by d x that is our sensitivity that is our sensitivity and that is equal to a by c s into b by a. And uh, this particular example the uh, uh, s equal to d x o by d x i also is equal to x o by x i when the characteristic curve is through the origin that happens to be x o by x i sensitivity, but we definition of s is never x o by x i it is this way it should not be defined it is to be defined always d x o by d x i. Because this is uh, this will made clear if you consider a nonlinear nonlinear relation nonlinear signal relation. For example, suppose x o is equal to a uh, x i squared plus b x i plus c. Suppose this is signal relation for an instrument. We find s equal to d x o by d x i is equal to for this signal relation 2 a x i plus b this is the signal relation or so this is sensitivity for this in type of instrument. There earlier s is a constant a by c s they are all parameter is a constant it remains constant throughout the uh, range or slope is constant so straight line slope is constant I can also plot this s also as uh, another o, o axis another scale I can have and write this is signal relation write it as signal relation 
and this is the sensitivity. Sensitivity is constant. When the instrument is linear, sensitivity is constant. But when the instrument is non-linear, then it is no more constant. It is again, yeah, is, uh, we know it is a 2A xi, the O is equal to mx plus uh, c uh, formula. So it is a straight, it's a straight line, it varies with the xi. In non-linear instruments, sensitivity is no more constant, it varies with the xi. And one more thing what we have to point out is, sensitivity has got a dimension, dimension the xo by xi. Suppose for this uh, pressure gauge, same instrument, pressure gauge, what is the output signal? Output signal is in terms of millimeter. Though it is written in terms of pressure, our signal our, our, for, for signal diagram, it is the displacement is the output signal that is in terms of millimeter. Millimeter divided by dxi that is our Pascal. Pascal. This is the see sensitivity has got the as a dimension millimeter per in the R the unit of the output signal divided by the unit of the input signal millimeter per Pascal. Similarly, in a uh, in a mercury uh, gla uh, mer glass uh, mercury in glass. A thermometer, we find thermometer when we is a, that this is a thermometer, yeah, a bulb, and when we immerse in a bath, this rises, rises. So the output signal here, see, even though it is written in terms of degree centigrade, output signal is in terms of millimeter motion. It's only motion, so millimeter. So their sensitivity is equal to a millimeter per degree centigrade or per degree centigrade. This is so sensitivity has got dimension. And what you have seen is for the analog instruments, for analog instruments signal relation is like this. Suppose you have got a digital instruments, what is sensitivity of a digital instrument? For this we just see how the instrument is functioning, this is our xi, this is our xo and uh, for digital instruments there are, as you have seen earlier, digital and analog instruments, the change in output signal is in steps, not smooth, for smooth variation, see it is in steps. So if we find the steps, we find the slope is either 0 or, or 1, 90 degrees, 0 degree or 90 degree, 1, 0 or 1. So naturally, there is no sensitivity for digital instruments. Hence, you will find no digital instrument is given the specification of sensitivity. Sensitivity is applicable only for analog instruments. So that is regarding the sensitivity. So sensitivity tells how, suppose uh, another good example is, suppose you have got two instruments instrument 1, instrument 2 and this is signal relation of the two instruments and naturally we find instrument 1 is more sensitive for instrument 2, it is because for a given differential change, this is our dxi represented dxi, for a given input change, the output signal varies for the first instrument only through say delta xo 1 or delta x out for second instrument, this is the um, output motion for the second instrument. For the first instrument we find so much output motions, this is delta x o 1. So if, the, if it happens to be 1 mm and the first instrument have, is going to give say 2, 3 mm and this happens, suppose the different change is 1 bar from uh, some uh, three, 2 bar to 3 bar when we change the input signal, what happens? Uh, what happens? Uh, the output uh, output motion for the instrument 2 is only 1 mm, for the first instrument is 3 mm. So, for the same input of 1 bar, first instrument gives 3 mm uh, reaction or uh, output signal, whereas second instrument gives 1 mm. So, we say the reaction is more in first instrument, so it is more sensitive. And also we can see slope of uh, this S2, slope of uh, instrument 1 is S1, so slope is more. That is how we say slope of the instrument is uh, represents sensitivity and uh, higher uh, sensitivity instruments gives rise to more output signal. Yeah. And uh, next concept is our um, uh, list count. Let us see what is, even though list count is understood, but it is to be defined once again. What is meant by list count of an instrument? Yeah, that is say fifth concept is list count. List count is the, uh, we, the definition of list count is, list count is the minimum input signal which can be read in the given scale. Now certain instruments have got one main scale and vernier scale and uh, here list count refers to the whatever the minimum input signal which, which we can read with the help of the uh, vernier scale also. So for example, we have got this, um, um, uh, uh, the, um, 
say the uh, length measuring instrument at the main scale maybe in terms of 1 mm and with vernier we can read up to 0 0.1, 0 0.1 mm. So, the least count of that instrument with vernier scale is 0 0.1 mm that is the minimum input signal which can be read uh, in the instrument in terms of the uh, two subsequent graduations or uh, if it is there is only one scale suppose I got so many uh, graduations in, uh, in a scale so 0 to say it may be 20. Say the distance between two graduations so this may be 1 the two the uh, two graduations subsequent graduations what it represents in terms of input signal see now we, have, we, we should not see in terms of millimeter so this represents one bar and this is two bar that is two subsequent graduation represents one bar input so that is the list count list count is in terms of input signal minimum input signal which is uh, which is represented by two consecutive graduations in this scale that is our list count now this uh, next concept is uh, threshold 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 of an instrument now so for this to explain this let us consider an instrument xi and xo and that uh, signal relation is like this now when we start this uh, uh, input signal from 0 onwards, this is 0 reading. Suppose we give the input signal, suppose in case it represents a pressure gauge, we give the pressure to the instrument and uh, from 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 bar but Pascal like that we increase and uh, until pressure is in, uh, pressure is increased to a certain point, so delta we will say delta xi, the pointer is not moved and then only further any input any increase only the pointer moves starts moving the pointer moves xo xo is not there until the pressure is increased or xi is increased from 0 to delta xi and this is our threshold so threshold represents the minimum increment in input signal from zero value of the instrument make the pointer move mind threshold is nothing to do with the list count list count represents the uh, input signal between two graduations but here the uh, pre previously suppose the, this is the scale 0 is standing pointer is standing against 0 if when the delta xi is uh, obtained then this pointer starts moving we can see the motion the pointer has moved from 0 whatever that is minimum requirement in input signal to make the pointer move out of 0 that is called threshold value yeah. so threshold value is the minimum increment in input signal make the pointer move visible movement in pointer uh, is if it is there then that is the threshold it need not move up to one graduation that is, is always misunderstood move, to move the pointer one then it become least count here, here it is the increment required to make the pointer move from zero visible motion that is our threshold value I think we will stop from here we will stop here